begin log entry number one. This is Joseph Kerman of the Copernicus. Two days ago, I woke to find myself drifting in space. Now I'm about to make a flyby of Duna, which is where I was originally headed when I was separated from my ship. I guess it's ironic that this is where I wanted to be, and now I'm here, but it's the last place I want to be. I don't even think I'm still in the same universe. I believe I have slipped through a wormhole into an alternate dimension. I have enough life support to last a few more days, but I'm not holding out any hope of rescue. I am therefore going to chronicle the events that led to this moment, and if this log should find its way into anyone's hands someday, at least someone will know what happened to me. Greetings, Kerbinauts. This is Kerbal Space Program. I'm Bob Fitch, and this is episode number 50 of Project Odyssey, in which we are going to recap all the episodes of Projects Gateway and Odyssey. It all started when Bob Kerman was experimenting with a new technology. He built a device that overloaded during one of his tests and tore a hole in space-time. Multiple universes started bleeding through into each other. Kessler Kerman studied the effects of the device and eventually discovered the anomalies and how to detect them. He also started working on a way to predict them. A large anomaly on Minmus left behind some extra-dimensional wreckage, including a thumb drive and bits of a computer. We detected the anomaly and sent a crew to retrieve the wreckage. These artifacts were from our human dimension. The thumb drive contained ISS blueprints. A commission was established and a new space organization was created to rebuild the ISS from those plans. Joseph Kerman was the project director. Like in the movie Contact, the Kerbals thought the device in the blueprints would allow contact or communication with an ancient alien species. Completing the ISS and activating a device on it called the Omega-13 was disastrous and caused the destruction of the solar system. A small crew of Kerbals who were away from Kerbin at the time were the only survivors. They spent the next 115 years, because Kerbals live a long time, using their knowledge of the anomalies to eventually build a device and travel back in time to warn their younger selves not to build the ISS. And so the only two survivors of a future Kervin, Krantz and Jebediah, traveled back to their own time before the temporal field collapsed. Having placed all the hopes of their tiny planet in the hands of Joseph, who must now stop the KSS from destroying everything. This is where Project Gateway starts.
Greetings, Kerbinards. Welcome. This is a new timeline. Joseph Kerman had warned himself not to be part of the project, so his brother Kranz Kerman is the project director in this timeline. Joseph is opposed to the construction of the ISS because he knows what his future self told him about what happens if they activate the Omega-13. Technically, future Krantz and Jeb told him because future Joseph was dead by that point. Version 1 of the ISS was built off-screen as a prototype. We see the construction of version 2 of the ISS over the first episodes of Project Gateway. Joseph manages to infiltrate the organization and gets malicious software installed on the station's computers. He gets the station to de-orbit itself, but Krantz orders the secondary backup modules to be launched while starting a manhunt for his brother. Version 3 of the ISS is launched over the next episodes and Joseph realizes he's not going to be able to stop the construction of the station. He instead focuses his attention on mitigating the effects of the anomalies. If he can at least stop the effects of the anomalies, then maybe in the end that might be enough to save the solar system. Joseph also realizes the Omega-13 may have been used incorrectly in the alternate timeline that warned him about it. He thinks that using it properly might actually be quite safe and could in fact be the answer to protecting the solar system. However, they'll need to survive long enough to reach that point and currently the anomaly situation is only getting worse. One particular anomaly near the moon has Joseph worried. He secretly constructs a device to send into the anomaly that will nullify it and prevent a catastrophe. It's definitely a temporary fix, like putting a band-aid on a gushing wound, but he hopes it will buy enough time to finish his research into how to use the Omega-13 properly. Krantz discovers where Joseph is hiding out and threatens him to stop interfering with the construction of the station. Joseph doesn't tell his brother about the warning from the future because he doesn't want to appear crazier than he already does. Instead, he tries to reason with Krantz about the dangers of what they are doing. Ultimately, Joseph needs to continue on his own to protect the universe. He sends his device to the moon using an experimental low thrust but high efficiency engine. The device enters the anomaly and stabilizes it enough to delay universal destruction by one more year. Krantz doesn't know what the device was supposed to do, so he assumes Joseph has done something to make the anomalies worse. He sends a squad to capture his brother and they find him hiding out in the Badlands. Has been picked up, leading us to believe we know the location of Joseph and his secret rocket construction facility. An elite force of Kerbal Commandos has been sent to take him down, led by Krantz Kerman himself. They fly deep into the Clegane Badlands in search of his hideout. Somewhere in the hills ahead sits Joseph Kerman, unaware that his capture is imminent. <laughs> We will never wait to the destruction of Kerbin and the entire system if we don't do anything about it. Have your scientists check my facts. You'll see I'm right. Is there any truth to what he said? Are these anomalies dangerous? Well, sir, even if we stopped now, I think it's too late. They're already becoming more unstable every single day. 
they're just going to continue like this until one day they rip the universe apart. Joseph Kerman, you stand accused of crimes against the Kerman states. You caused you evidence destroy. also suggests that you are the only reason we have not been destroyed already. Council has decided to spare you on one condition. You must join the team and help us finish the Omega-13 and finish He the agrees cancer. to work on the Omega-13 because he feels they are only a few months from understanding how to use it properly to not only reverse the anomaly effects, but also find out what it was really meant to be. Sadly, a huge anomaly opens inside the sun. Solar mass from several parallel dimensions begins flooding into our sun and causes instability, which is leading to a supernova and subsequent black hole. However, before that happens, the crew on Kerbin decide to activate the Omega-13 early in the hope that it will stop or reverse the effects, even though it's not ready and has not been tested. We need volunteers to go up and- Joseph, there's a massive energy surge coming from the sun. We have no time to make a scientific decision. We need to know right now, do we remote activate the Omega-13 or do you think we will survive the surge? Activate it now! This is where Project Odyssey starts. Only a handful of Kerbal personnel survive. They slip into an alternate dimension where no Kerbals exist, and yet there is a whole KSC there. The occupants have slipped into a separate dimension of their own, leaving their old world uninhabited. The crew vows to find a way to reverse the effects of the anomalies and restore their original home. They realize that a piece was missing from the Omega-13 all along, which might be why it didn't perform as expected. It might also be the reason why they were sucked to this dimension, because the two parts might be acting like magnets attracting each other. They need to get to Duna, get the artifact there, bring it back and combine it with the piece they already have. That's the only way to unlock its full potential and save the universe. Hadfield Kerman didn't make it through the rift as easily as the others. He appeared displaced in space and time and first showed up around the moon. Just discussing Hello? Is anyone there? This is Hadfield. Is that you, Krantz? I don't have any life support other than my suit. They had no way to rescue him, so they presumed him dead after realizing he didn't have enough life support to last more than a few hours. Good night, Hadfield. Good night, Hadfield. Good night. However, Hadfield had slipped in and out of an alternate reality where time moved differently. We already knew this was possible because it happened to Bill on Minmus during Project Gateway. I guess they didn't consider this, so he was presumed dead. Hadfield eventually appeared again, so the crew on Kerbin realized what was happening and set out to rescue him. Unfortunately, the effects of being in the alternate reality for so long was having an effect on his DNA. It was essentially giving him a lethal dose of exotic radiation. He has eight days to live unless we can think of something. Are you still running? There was a potential short-term cure and a long-term cure. Dimexylcobridin can only be located in sufficient quantities in the upper atmosphere of Joule. They whipped up the short-term cure right away and prepared a probe to gather the needed element from Joule's upper atmosphere for the long-term cure. Fuel was a problem. They were running out. They had a supply left behind by the old occupants of this Kerbin. But they had insufficient personnel to run the refineries to make more. 15,000 liters in that one? That is just not enough. Oh dear, oh dear. There aren't enough of us to process fuels the usual way here on the surface. There are trace amounts of some substance we've never seen before here. 
They started working on a refining program to turn something called kethite into fuel. Valentina Kerbin was also working with Kessla Kerman on a way to teleport tiny amounts of matter at a time. It was hoped that someday they might also research a way to transport more than a few ounces at a time and even get to where they could transport kerbals. That was a long way off though. A second problem was the anomalies having an effect on their memories. Okay, think of our universe as a delicious snack. You can smell a snack from far away sometimes because bits of that snack break off and float away, ending up in your nose where you can smell them. You can't see it, but you know it's there. Well, the alternate universe is breaking off and floating into our universe through the anomalies. Things that never happened in our universe can be witnessed, and things that we think happened might actually just be memories that are bleeding from the alternate universe into ours. Basically, it's like smelling a snack. We can sense the alternate universe. Valentina is in our space station, but in a nearly identical parallel universe, Valentina may have stayed on the ground and someone else may have gone up instead. Bob is sensing that difference. What this means is we can never be truly sure anything we are doing or seeing is real. It'll slowly get worse as time goes by too, and so we need to finish this trip to Duna as soon as we can. It was not good. Svetlana Kerman was a Kerbal from an alternate, parallel dimension that had also been affected by the tears in space-time. Her entire planet was almost destroyed and they were working with a limited crew as well. They had better technology including transporters, shields, warp drive, cloaking, ansible communication. They were researching the source of the anomalies and had tracked down a signal to our Omega-13. They were a few weeks away from a mission to explore the source of the anomalies when an accident set Svetlana into our dimension earlier than she had expected. She was recovered by our crew and nursed back to health. The Kerbals from her dimension ordered her to keep her mission a secret. Svetlana, you're alive. I order you to not reveal what you know. Don't tell them we are capable of communicating through wormholes. Find out what you can about their technology and send it back to us. Run program titled Override 1. Accessing. Safety's disabled. Erase any record of my actions. She stole the tech as ordered, but had second thoughts after meeting the equivalent of her sister from our dimension. Your orders are to use that Corbamite device and return home with whatever tech they have that we don't, and all their computer files. But- Your orders are clear. Return home. Yes, sir. Valentina? We need to talk. But you look and sound just like her. Yeah, some kind of parallel dimension thing. Each of the girls had lost their own sisters in their original dimensions. Svetlana attempted to return the tech she stole, but something went wrong and she was overcome with radiation while returning it. Shut down Corbomite device. Unable to comply. Unlock the hatch, I'm going in. Seal the chamber with me inside. She's not answering. According to the computer, she entered the capsule. She should be in there. Everyone out! Get to a safe distance! She helped stop and overload and then revealed the truth to her sister and everyone else. Back in Svetlana's home dimension, leaders Sergei and Kamalak decided Svetlana was either captured or worse, brainwashed. They set out to use their better technology to bridge the gap between universes and come take our tech and rescue Svetlana. They equipped their tactical ship, the Raptor 1, with their new trans-dimension portal device and followed the Omega-13 signal to our new dimension. However, they activated their cloaking device to hide their approach while still inside the event horizon of the anomaly they had used for transport. This led to a massive anomaly spike similar to using the Omega-13 itself. It caused the same distortion that had brought our crew to this world, and thus our crew was sent to yet another new world. Kamalok's crew was left behind, but so was Bill because he was in orbit on Odyssey Station. Bill was taken captive by Kamalok and Raptor 1. 
They interrogated him and used Kintari slugs in his brain to force him to reveal his secrets and obey them. The crew discovered an abandoned base just as before. On the plus side, they had fuel again. They restored the communication satellites. They started a new Odyssey station. They tracked down the Duna artifact again. It would just be a matter of time before they'd have everything they needed to restore the Omega-13 and finally save the universe. The same thing happened again where Hadfield came through late, but this time we were more prepared. Kesla had developed anomaly tracking tech and was able to predict his arrival. We had a rescue ship in place ready to get him. Neil Kerman worked on the cure to his illness. Kamalak and Raptor 1 had not given up. They worked for several months to track us down and eventually did. However, they had needed to use the high gravity of their EVE to get the energy needed, and we were able to detect this with the satellites of our dimension. The effects were showing through to our EVE here, and so we sent a satellite to investigate more closely. Once we discovered what the cause was, and with Svetlana's insight into her people's plans, we knew what to expect and who was coming. A few hours ago, a large disturbance was detected by the sensors at EVE, and a wormhole with Svetlana's help, we should be able to predict their actions and account for all contingencies. Kamalak had teleported down to the base we left behind. He procured some tech needed to bridge the dimensional gap more safely this time. They worked out a way to use their shields to prevent another anomaly spike. Kamalak, Bill, and two guards teleported down to our base and assaulted Krantz's office to take him captive. But we knew they were coming. We were prepared and took them captive instead. I don't get it. Why's the room empty? Hey, what's going on? Your Kamalak, I take it? Bill was sent to Neil to have his brainwashing reversed. The guards were in prison. Kamalak was initially imprisoned, but we eventually talked him into working with us to help save both universes. Fine, but you need to do a few things for me. Put on more of that music. Let me have as much of that snack as I want. What did you call it? Popcorn. I want access to a scanner so I can keep trying to find or contact my ship in orbit above us. Done. Raptor 1 had slipped into another anomaly and was destroyed, so there was no way for his people to rescue Kamalak even if he had declined. Well, I'm here with Kamalak and we have a deal to offer you. I'm listening. The crew was finally united in their purpose. They designed and built the Copernicus and many ground modules to be used during the excavation of Duna. They set sail, so to speak, but along the way ran into another ship that slipped in from yet another alternate dimension. The crew of the other ship was just out of phase enough to be invisible, but just in phase enough to interact with the solid surfaces and computers of the Copernicus, and us with their ship. We figured out how to reverse the localized anomaly effects and prevent the destruction of both vessels, but Joseph was lost in the process. The crew made it to Duna, landed, excavated the artifact, and returned to the Copernicus. They headed back to Kerbin and rendezvoused with Odyssey Station, where the Omega-13 had been charging up and getting ready for the missing piece. The crew combined the parts, fired it up, and reversed not only the anomaly effects, but time itself. They also strengthened the fabric of space-time to prevent the same thing from happening again when Bob's experiment would inevitably be run like it was in the original timeline. This time, there was no explosion, and so the events caused by the explosion never took place. This would be the end, if not for the questions of... What was Bob working on? What would have happened if he had continued its development? Were the anomalies truly stopped once and for all? Or were they just delayed? So this could be the end. Or it might not be. Until next time, I will see you later, Kerbinauts.
that's it. Thus ends my final log entry. This is Joseph of the Copernicus, signing off for the final time. Beautiful.